Today we're going to discuss the material derivative. Let's start with the conceptual idea. Imagine a river. On the banks of this beautiful river is a factory. This factory is suspected of dumping pollutants into the river. So you could imagine if they would, you might see some plume of stuff flowing downstream. So you've been tasked with sort of monitoring the river and trying to figure out what these, uh, this factory is dumping in the river. So there's a few things you could do or a few ways that you could uh, take your data. So one is you could stand on the side of the river. You could deploy some sensor out in the river, say in the middle. And maybe you could do several of them, but let's just talk about one for, for now. And you could monitor the concentration versus time of whatever the pollutant is that you want to see. And you might record some very steady value, which would indicate that the river is flowing at probably the same rate, that the flow conditions aren't changing, that the factory is dumping out a pollutant at essentially a constant rate. Now, if you saw it increase, you would interpret that as now they're dumping more pollutant out. And if you saw it decrease, maybe it's less. So this goes with sort of heightened or lowered production. But in either case, you could measure the concentration as a function of time. You could also come along and do something similar, but subtly different, which is you could get a boat. You could deploy your sensor into the water, and you could also measure the concentration as a function of time. But here, you're not fixed. You're going to float down the river, and you're going to go with the flow of the river, so you're going to speed along. So maybe from your initial time to the time that you reach this point, you're upstream of the factory, so your concentration that you record is zero. You cross over in here, and so it starts to increase. As you move through here, you see maybe a high value, and then maybe you leave the plume or something, and it decreases again. So both of these representations are valid, but they're, you can see that they're fundamentally measuring different things, because here we're, measure, we're plotting the concentration as a function of time, but our, fish, our position is not fixed. We're going with the flow. However, it's important to realize that if I pass right over this sensor, so say this is me taking this data and you're taking this data, and I come float by and I pass this point, that at a particular position and at a particular time, we should record the same value. So our measurements are equivalent, but our interpretation might be different. So let's be a little more precise and introduce the idea of a fluid particle. Here's our 2D coordinate system x and y, and it's containing some fluid on the inside, which is a continuum. And so a fluid particle is nothing more than a little chunk of fluid. We'll assume it's the same matter, or it's the same mass. It can move about in the flow, so it can move to a different position and it can deform, but wherever it goes, it's the same stuff. Now we have to be a little bit careful because we mean the same stuff in a continuum sense. We're not talking about like a single molecule here. So again, we're talking about this lim the continuum limit where we're talking about these infinitesimal particles, but they're enormous compared to molecules. So we just assume that the fluid is made up essentially of an infinite number of these little particles, and we assume that we can track their position as a function of time. So I'll use vector a to denote the position of the particle at time equals to zero, our reference time. And I'll use vector r, which is a function of the initial position and time, to denote the position of our particle of interest at some later time. Now, just as when we were discussing the uh, pollutant, if we had some field that was filling our space and we wanted to measure that field, we could represent it as a function of position or the initial position of the particle. Those two measurements would have to be equivalent. So just like in the problem with the pollutants, if you stand on the bank of the river and I'm floating down, if we cross paths at some point, we have to agree at that particular time on what the concentration is. But in theory, we could sense the whole field from either the fixed coordinate system or going with the flow. Right, because if we seeded this fluid with an infinite number of particles and we could track their concentrations as a function of time, it would be sufficient to, to plot the concentration as a function of initial position and time, or we could do it from a fixed reference frame where it's just what's the concentration at every point, 
as a function of time. The two descriptions have to be equivalent, but as in the previous example, they're subtly different. Now, if we want to write things in our fixed coordinate system, all we have to do is realize that we could also write that as the current position or a particular position, which is a function of the initial position of a particular particle that's passing through that point. All these descriptions must be equivalent. So what we want to do is I think we have a good intuition as if we're in a fixed reference frame, what's the change in the concentration of the function of time? If I look at a particular point, I can monitor how that change uh, occurs. Now let's talk about change with respect to time if we're a fluid particle and what we sense as we go with the flow. Okay, so we have our concentration field, which is going to be a fun function of position and time. And our position is a function of the particle's initial position and in time as well. So this is kind of a funny thing. But let's take the time derivative of that. So I'm going to take ddt holding a constant. So I'm going to take the time derivative of the concentration field for a particular particle. So I just need to follow the chain rule. I have the time derivative of the field itself plus right, this other term, which has to do with the time derivative of the position. right? And remember, this is holding a constant. So this is for a particular fluid particle. Now, we might, might notice a few things. So if I take the derivative of a particle's position vector as a function of time, that's nothing more than its velocity, so the particle's velocity. And this is a little bit funny notation, but I've written the derivative of the concentration is a function of our vector r, but remember r is just the coordinate position x, y, and z. So this is nothing more than a different way of writing the gradient of c. So putting that together, we could say the time derivative of the concentration field holding the fluid particle constant is the fluid velocity dotted with the gradient of c. Now this operator shows up so often in this course and in fluid mechanics that we give it a special name. We call it the material derivative because it's the time derivative that the material sees, right? So if I'm going with the flow, it's the time rate of change that I see of the field. And it shows up so often that we give it a special notation, which is capital D. Writing this thing out in a component form. So writing this out in component form where our velocity vector has components u, v, w, we have a term that looks like this. If you ever get confused, um, sometimes it's nice to put parentheses around that because then you see you have an operator v dot gradient, which is u, v, w, dotted with the gradient operator partial x, partial y, partial z. So our material derivative operator, which is written like that, uh, just to give a little bit of interpretation in 1D. So let's go to our river example. So we have a velocity field U, which will just be constant. Let's have a concentration field that looks like that. So we have no concentration. Then we have stuff. This term tells us if this field is changing with time. This term tells us as we move with our constant velocity from here into here, right, there's a gradient of c, right, because c is increasing with respect to x. So as we cross from this region to this region, this term pops up. When we're moving through here, if the concentration is constant with respect to x, as we move through, we sense no change in time, right, because the concentration here, here, and here is the same. It's only when we pass through a gradient. So that's what this term means.